What comes to your mind when you think of the words connection and network? Most definitely in today's world, you must be thinking about your smartphones and Wi-Fi network. Well, we all live in a connected world, yet we are the disconnected lot, especially when it comes to parenting. Well, that's our topic for discussion today. How can we connect with our children and disconnect from gadgets? I'm Rajesh Vishwanathan, your moderator for today, and I have a very eminent panel alongside me today to talk about this very, very important subject. I have first up Dr. Nitya Purnima, eminent uh, child psychologist and assistant professor from NIMHANS, India's premier mental health institute. Dr. Nitya is also on the advisory board of a parent circle. Thank you, Dr. Nitya, for uh, joining us today. I also have alongside me Dr. Meghna Singhal, who heads the uh, prime content initiatives at a Parent Circle and Dr. Meghna Singhal is a PhD in clinical psychology and is also a research fellow from University of Queensland in Australia, so from down under all the way to India. And I also have alongside me our third panelist today, Shubha Partha Sardi, uh, who is the founder of Magic Hive. That's a nice name, Magic Hive. And uh, she has been working for the last 10 years helping parents understand themselves. That's interesting, helping parents understand themselves. Thank you, Shubha, for joining. And thank you, everybody, uh, for coming in today. And Dr. Nitya, I need to start uh, first up uh, with you because you do meet many parents day in and day out. We all know, right, um, connection uh, when it comes to parent and child, you know, connection is the most natural phenomenon. Uh, you know, even Dr. Laura Markham, one of the eminent parenting gurus, uh, was seen saying recently that, you know, parenting is about 80% connection and the rest is only 20%. So, do you see gadgets are actually interrupting that connection in today's world? I mean, I, I'm using the word interrupting. Yes. Yes, when you talk about connection between uh, parents and children, it's about knowing what's going on in each other's mind. The parent needs to know what's happening in the child's mind. The child needs to know what's happening in the parent's mind. And if you have, uh, like we all do in our lives today, many, many gadgets around us which are constantly demanding attention, it is hard to get that process going on, you know, to get to know what's happening in each other's minds. So yes, gadgets have a very, very high potential to interrupt uh, the conversations and connections that happen between parents and children. Right. So does, does that also mean, I mean, uh, Dr. Meghna, I just need to come to you for that because um, you were talking about, you know, uh, are children today equipped, you know, when, when I use the word equipped here, I'm talking about are their brains equipped enough to handle the enormous features that come in with gadgets or it's too much for them to take? Absolutely, it is too much and not just for children. And I would like to point to some research here because our brains, even as adults, are not equipped to handle as much exposure to screens. And I would like to delve a little now into what actually happens in, at the level of our brains when our brains are exposed to as much screen. So the brain interprets that as a sign of stress and immediately goes into a fight and flight mode. Fight and flight mode is the immediate reaction of the brain when we encounter any kind of stress. So the blue rays that, emit, that screens emit, they shut down the sleep hormone melatonin and you know they impact us, uh, our sleep. The fast paced visuals and sounds and moving pictures, they are not very good because it, it, they're very stimulating for our brain, both adults and children alike. So with, with so much of onslaught of stimulation, what is happening is, see in the real world when we encounter some kind of a stimulation, we make, we, we, we learn to deal with it by moving, by physically moving. So we, we, we kick, we run, we cry, we shout, we do all of these things. But with screens, our brains are, are undergoing that much of stimulation, overstimulation, but there is no outlet. So, so essentially what you're also saying is that overstimulation is, can manifest itself in a multitude of problems, right? I mean, is there a direct impact on behavior as well because of that? Yes, we do see that in our clinics that the more children are engaging uh, with gadgets to the exclusion of joint activities, either with children their own age or with their families or you know, even in free play, we do see that these are children who are having a lot of behavioral difficulties, ranging from, like Dr. Meghna said, sleep difficulties to concentration problems to feeling easily frustrated to feeling very angry, irritable, 
wanting things immediately, you know, having their needs met immediately. So there are a range of issues. And we do see a lot of uh, uh, teenagers who are uh, slipping away from their routine, who are unable to attend school regularly, who slip away from those uh, activities that actually benefit them into exclusive engagement with gadgets. So it does translate into these sorts of behaviors. So, so in, in a nutshell, what we are trying to essentially say is probably children are not equipped uh, uh, to handle the gadgets and probably that's being thrust on them. But Shubha, I need to come to you on this one. Um, you know, I know you help parents understand themselves better, but in a world today which is dominated by probably working parents is the theme, right? Working parents is the theme. Um, do you see more and more situations where families are together but alone, I mean, are connected but alone? And do you also see uh, situations where parents and children are not having enough time for each other? Yeah, definitely. It is not that they don't have time for each other. It is just that other things take up your priority in your life, say earning or going for holidays and stuff like that. So what happens is the connection between the parent and the child, somewhere it is neglected. Because uh, the gadgets is just one part of it. Whether the gadgets are there, it will be something else. The main thing is that as adults, we are not equipped to handle our emotions, the changing environment, the changing, uh, we, we are finding it tough to adapt to the changes that are happening. And plus children are coming into our world where we are not aware of how we need to work with them. So the connection somewhere is, is getting dropped here and there because emotionally children are not even aware of what they are going through, what they are feeling, what they are thinking. It's more logical. So, so life has become very, you know, instructional and logical. There is no... So the okay, naturality is missing. Yes. The, the naturality. Is it, is it also because, you know, missing. the structures have evolved and we, we, are, we are in many ways going through a transitionary phase, right? The family structure, especially in India, when you talk about family structures, we, we came in from a joint family system and now nuclear family structures are the, the norm today. I mean, they, were no more, they are no more a novelty. It's a norm today. So. In, in a joint family system, I remember talking to a lot of people who said, okay, the child comes back from school and there's an instant connection with the grandparents and then, you know, they go, they take a stroll in the street and then they talk, they, they talk and interact a lot. So, are those interactions missing today between parents and the children? So going back to what uh, Shubha was also saying, that uh, there are other things that are taking the place of these interactions and it has become very, very instructional and very achievement oriented. So a lot of parent-child time goes into homework or studying or activity class or you know, something that has to have an outcome, that needs to have an end result that can be shown as competence in a given child. So spending time just for the fun of spending time together, just to do some nonsense and laugh about it, play together, I think that's something that's missing. So it's not right. exactly that the time that's missing, but what we do that has also changed. So in a, in a nutshell, Dr. Meghna, I mean, we were talking before the start of this uh, interaction itself, free play. Absolutely. It's, I think is it free gone out play, of the window today? I mean, free play. I think it has shrunk a lot. Just like our green spaces have shrunk, our playgrounds have shrunk. I think free play has shrunk from the lives of children. As you know, Dr. Nitya was saying, the idea of over scheduling and structuring children's time has taken over the idea of being spontaneous and unstructured and just winding your time away. I mean, I don't see uh, children climbing trees anymore. I mean, just imagine that visual in our childhood. It was such a common thing that everybody does it without thinking much about it. And today, you just don't see that happening. I so, mean, it's a great point. I mean, you, you talk about, we talk about a lot of uh, things from our own childhood too, right? I mean, I think all of us are sitting here, I'm pretty much sure we have indulged in a lot more activities as children with our parents than the generation today is. I mean, who is responsible for that? Well, I don't think uh, we can blame anybody or anything for that matter. And I, I'm, I'm the last person to even black paint technology. I mean, we're not here to bash technology. But technology is a great enabler. It can, it can reduce our time. It can reduce our burden of so many things. The fact that 
you know, uh, I'm sitting here, a mother of two young kids, I'm I'm 100% sure that my kids are being taken care of is because of technology partly because I know I can view them through my CCTV at the click of a button and I can book a cab for my child to you know go to an activity class or to come to for my you know nanny to fetch her back from school so technology in itself is not the problem right so I think we should not black paint technology what we should do is to look at what we how we can enable it to you know be an enabler for us rather than driving us. Right. I think that's the, that's the idea. That's, that's a fantastic point that you just made. You know, technology should be seen as an enabler, which, which is always the case. Isn't it? Technology is an enabler, but we are allowing it to probably not just drive our lives, but to dictate our lives as well. Shubha, just coming back to you, uh, uh, you interact a lot with uh, parents. Uh, in, you help parents understand themselves. So what is their own understanding? I mean, do they feel comfortable the way they are connecting with their children today, I mean, in all your interactions? See, like Dr. Nitya said, uh, there is a lot of focus on the doing, the skill building, the outcomes. So, so till the outcomes are in, in conformity with what, as a parent, I want, then there is there are no issues generally. So even if the child is doing really well in his academics and maybe behavior-wise, the parent is seeing some change, but they don't, um, you know, think that's a signal or to stop or pause and ask ourselves what is happening. Only when the academics or the outcomes start getting affected. So the child refuses to go for a badminton class. The child throws a tantrum if he doesn't win anything. The child is wanting a gadget. So things like that, when it starts becoming overwhelming, that is the time the parent actually pauses and asks, oh, there is something going on out here. And at that moment also, it's more to do with the child rather than them. Right, right. So it is a challenge when we tell the parent that, you know what, you need to check your beliefs, you need to check your thoughts, you need to pause. And it's like you work with them. Right. Great point. I mean, one of the key points that was also brought through right now in this discussion is that, you know, probably connections also dependent on how we are scheduling the other day. Sometimes we are probably guilty of over scheduling. So we'll just come back. We need to take a short break here, some uh, great conversation underway right now. I must tell you, it's not all gloom and doom because technology like Dr. Meghna and Dr. Nitya were also indicating can also be very beneficial. So we're going to discuss on the other side of the break how technology can be made an enabler in our lives and probably move it back from uh, distracting us or from, uh, you know, driving us to enabling our, uh, you know, day-to-day -day life. So we'll come back after a short break. Thank you.